Hello everybody, welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. Good to have you with us once again, Lawrence. Our regular is back. I wasn't regular. For Lovely to see you again. Yes. And sports journalist Sam Collins. Hello. The man behind yeah. Death of a Gentleman. Yes. The, uh, the documentary about cricket and all that lovely yeah, stuff. Yeah, that other game. Mm, the, it, that other the, game. The, the, sadly, the we're not summer sport. Yeah. Yeah. Cricket just as well, actually, considering what Australia did to England in the last test. But there we are. Um, uh, five things we learned from the weekend. First up, Chelsea have steadied the shit just. Or have they, Sam? It wasn't convincing. John Terry was sent off. Uh, but Mourinho kept his views to himself. What ship are we talking about here? Yeah, the, 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 the good blue ship Chelsea. <laughs> the good Mary blue. Rose. <laughs> By chucking their anchor. That's yeah. one way of chucking him, out, chucking him overboard. John yes. Terry getting sent off. So, well, I don't, I don't know. Does winning away at West Brom 3-2 and allowing James Morrison to have like 86 efforts on goal, does that constitute <laughs> steadying a ship? Yeah, that's a I good like the stats there. he brings. Mm, yeah, indeed. just wild, you know, sports journalists. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's very true. Lawrence, what, what do you think of Chelsea? Unconvincing? Or do you think that's them turning the... The Mary Jose around. Should we just not write the narrative yet? Uh, three games, very small, what do you call it, a sample size maybe, to, to judge this Chelsea side. But in those three games, they've not been very convincing in the way they've played. Um, their back line was exposed time and time again, not only by James Morrison, mm -hmm. but just by having players running at them. Rondon looks uh, good. Exactly, it? yeah. Uh, but not only does he look good, but then you have to say, well, Chelsea's positioning looked pretty poor, and yeah, Mourinho broke absolutely. the game they himself. They look brittle. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah exactly. Matic didn't look very no, good. No, he's been off it for six months. He has, yeah. Yeah, sluggish was the word that most people used to describe them in the papers. Well, against Manchester City, they, they did look very sluggish, but Pedro didn't. No, what I, what I like about Pedro is he's quite clinical. He reminds me a bit of Rafa van der Vaart, you know, as a long-suffering Spurs fan. I, <laughs> Don't I, see like, it. The, I like the fact that when van der Vaart... Well, no, it was something like, when van der Vaart turned up, there was a sense of, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you stick it in the back of the net. And yeah. I like the way that Pedro yesterday picked it up, drove, took the one-two, and just gets a shot off. And there's a bit of Lampard there. And I think Chelsea need that sort of, you know, Willian and, and, and Hazard, as much as that might sound like I'm uh, attacking the, the devil by saying Hazard's not clinical enough, still think he's got room to go and Chelsea need people in that, you know, behind the front man who are going to score goals. Yeah. Lawrence, no, I agree. Yeah. Do you, I, I mean, when you, when you look at this Chelsea side, it's not that different to the one that won the league. Yeah. Uh, but they do look quite a bit off the pace early on and Mourinho clearly is feeling a bit of the pressure. Mm. <clears throat> Bella Gutmanesque, isn't it? It is, yes, yeah. for all you uh, Hungarian football fans well, from the 1950s and yeah, 60s. Yeah, exactly. Um, how right am I in saying that? I don't know. But he, he, go, he goes three seasons and then it always falls off. Well, that's the issue, isn't it? And he relies on such a, a, a sort of core group of players that yeah. when someone like Matic loses form, mm -hmm. who is there? Well, yeah. he does like a small squad, doesn't yeah. he? Which uh, Pep Guardiola uh, liked as well. And it's, and it's, as you say, it's worked for Mourinho for, for two or three years. Has he realised this? They've got Pedro in, they're looking to, I mean, they're trying to get stones in from Everton by, um, by all or costs. Crook. Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah. Do, do you think that he has to rethink this now, Lawrence? Because looking at that squad now, Diego Costa has often struggled with injury. Yeah. Um, I mean, they do have a, a bit of strength in depth. They've got a pretty good squad. Pedro is, Pedro is brought in to score yeah. goals, I think, and be much more direct, to make Chelsea mm -hmm. a much more incisive side. Um, it, it's clear that people have not worked out Chelsea, but they know where their brittle part is, and that's essentially the back line just in front of them. Mm. Um, I think they'll find teams this season that they'll be able to go through because the Premier League tactically sometimes when people line up against each other it just they they're a mismatch and i think chelsea will find that mismatch at some point mm. and it'll look as if jose steadied the ship completely this is not the case right now i still think the midfield looks pretty poor pace wise mm. i also think that when you look at whatever striking option they have mm. they don't seem to be playing to those strengths mm. so, costa looked better yesterday though yeah he did, yeah he did yeah. look more he looked like he was, his hamstrings are sort of obviously such a worry for Chelsea. Mm. Yeah. But he did look yesterday like people were bouncing off him again. Mm. Yeah. Which is at least something yeah. that's yeah. better. In, 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 indeed. Well, uh, at least they won for Chelsea's sake. Bournemouth are not here to make up the numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, we've got news for you. They won 4 3 at West Ham. Mm. Sam, at West Ham. Yes. And Callum Wilson. That fortress. Indeed. <laughs> Callum Wilson got a hat trick. He did. He looks good, doesn't he? He looks quick, turns mm. defenders, um, you know, nice little interplay. Yeah. I was saying it's quite weird, like. Drop the stat in, drop your stat in. No, it's not a stat. I was just going to say, like, how many. It's quite interesting how many good strikers are coming out from the championship mm. nowadays. Like, last few years we've had Jay Rodriguez, we've mm. had last season we had Danny Ings, mm. this season we've got. Um, well, Charlie Austin. Charlie, Charlie Austin, Austin as well, obviously. Yeah. And actually, all those guys have got a Bernie link, which is always weird as well. Ricky Lambert? Yeah. Also, who's the other one this season? Um, Deeney looks good too. Troy Deeney? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, well, Callum Wilson is only the fifth player in the history of the Premier League. Simeon Jackson. 
to score a hat trick for a newly promoted side. Yeah. How about that, Laura? Who else has done that? There's been a few. But four. What did you, Kevin oh, Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, yeah, four others. Leave them in the comments below. Yeah. Um, you know who they are. What do you think about Bournemouth? They, they played your you. Liverpool side the, yeah. other, the other week. They look very good. They were unlucky not to get something out Incredibly, of Incredibly, uh, yeah. Like, they're not aggressive, are they, as a team? They're, no. they're just very high energy. You know? Organised? Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's sort of... But what, what I mean is going forward. They're yeah. a unit. How many cliches do you want me to cover in one sentence? Oh, any of them. Okay. I'm throwing what, them out there. You just need to grab hold. What of them. I enjoyed was the way that they made Liverpool suddenly panic mm -hmm. by, I, I, you know, just basically changing the tempo of the way they played the game. And it looks as if the backline was sort of like, wait, wh where did this come mm -hmm. from? As if they weren't somehow expecting it. And what West Ham looked incredibly normal in those first 20 well, minutes. The first 20 well, minutes. minutes given, right. given how much you know smoke is blown up Cresswell's ass, yeah, and how he played yesterday right. on Saturday. I mean, Jenkinson again looked pretty average as well. Um, exactly. what, what, why, why do you think teams are coming up from the championship and looking so much more competitive against the bigger teams? You know, this year, who have we got? We've got Bournemouth, we've got Norwich and Watford, Norwich and, Watford and they all look really good. Obviously, you've got so many sides spending so much money, like Stoke, like the West Hams and all that stuff, and yet yeah, the teams are coming up from the championship and looking mm -hmm. like they can compete with them, basically not having spent much money. I know Watford have, but mm -hmm. Bournemouth and Norwich be much more... Now, what, why, why do we think that is? Is it tactics or is that just... Um... I do think it's partly down to homogeneity of tactics, isn't it? And the, the, where the teams are putting emphasis on sides. And you made the point earlier that wingers early on in the season, of course, are going to have quite a lot of energy and the wings are going to be very critical. All these guys have got very energetic, very incisive wingers there coming up from the championship. And you wonder, can they sustain that for a whole season? Um, even though they did in the championship, mm. but then there's still there's, there's another intensity in the Premier League. I guess is what most people make yeah. the point. Yeah. Can people stick it in the net? Yeah, but the, but then if you play four three three or four five one, then you know you're you're able to match up against any Premier League side tactically. And we still see Premier League sides struggling at the back, I think. And in terms of shape, maybe what we're finding is we've got some managers who in this generation are really good at setting out their teams. I mean, you named a couple of guys: Brendan Rodgers, uh, you said Gary Monk. Uh, how all those guys who are building quite exciting attacking football sides. And I think that, that's what makes them competitive. Or are we mistaking being competitive for playing nice football and therefore sure, saying... But we'll go back to what you were saying about the promoted sides. So sometimes they start very well. We've seen that with Hull and we saw that with um, Blackpool as well. And then, and then as long as they do drop off because perhaps there's a, only a certain amount of energy that they have with maybe some smaller squads or a lack of, lack of experience. But, the, but often promoted sides do go down. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, QPR and Two Burnley yeah, went, yeah. Went, the, went down last year. These three guys look as good a Premier League promoted Well, Howe is a very well thought out manager. You know, he's not just the typical uh, old fashioned English, you know, G the players up type of manager. That, that he's remarkable. You read up anything on Howe, the, the way he runs the operation down there is quite sensational. Watford are a strange one, that revolving door with managers and players, but it seems to work. But a proven track record in signing. Yeah, absolutely. And no Kike Sanchez Flores. Yeah, that's um, a very sexy guy. In, as that, well you know, as so. being a former Atletico Madrid manager. Yeah. Yeah. But his sexiness cannot be understated. It's yeah. very in, important in the relegation. Exactly. Don't reduce him down to his body. Though, I wouldn't please. say the same about Alex Neal. No. But. Well, a different type of. Sexy. Depends on your taste, doesn't it? Really? Depends, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got a. Yeah. A bit more of a manly British. Uh, you know, Scottish even they probably picked him specifically to appeal to the Norfolk fan base. I yeah. would imagine so. North Norfolk fan yeah. base, mm. yes. Yeah, Indeed. So uh, yes, Bournemouth and the other teams certainly aren't making up their numbers. Manchester City are the early pace setters in the Premier League. Three wins out of three look very impressive, mm -hmm. gentlemen. They're scoring goals and they're not conceding, Lawrence. Eight goals, three games, three wins, zero conceded. Marvellous. Very different uh, in Vincent Company looking this season as he well. He fancies it, doesn't he? He fancies it. No, he's easy to And Mangala it. as well. Mangala as well. And then you think Otamendi's come in, uh, and that's that, that's going to make a great, there's a great three there they can rotate around. Very much um, so. Although he made the point, why would I rotate them out if, if they're yeah, working if they're well? well. Just quietly, they get tired. As quietly as you can when you're spending 30 million on <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're just going to do this. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, Sterling looks fantastic. He's slotted in very nicely. Boney is about one of the best reserves you can, can have up front. Do you know why they look quiet though? Why? Because United are shouting so loud about everything yeah, that's happening there. Yeah. And they, that, mean, that means that the Sterling thing almost got lost this summer because mm. if United just 
incompetence or falling asleep. Yeah, Edward Wood is one of the most phenomenal. I know we're not talking about yeah. United here, but, no, but Edward City won't mind. His attempts to be Fiorentino Perez. Yeah. It's just one of the most embarrassing. And then you've got Van Hal and you're like, are you sunburnt or just really <laughs> angry or yeah, embarrassed? Exactly. Yeah. It's probably not embarrassing. Constantly but, um, embarrassed. But you're right, Manchester United have, have, have been a bit uh, funny with the transfer dealings and so on. Chelsea haven't started very well, but, but Manchester City are just going about it and they playing very well. They do don't they? They do. Because of the wings. Yeah. Like we, we made the point about the championship wings, but the, the Premier League wings. Well, Navas looks like a, a rejuvenated man. Um, Sterling. Mm. Uh, and, and David that, Silva floating around. And that makes Karov yeah. look so much the better fullback. And, um, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, Vincent Company actually does look different this season. He shines mm. and he has like a... He's got less body fat, I think. I know that's a simple observation, but he does look a lot fitter, a lot, a lot more broad. He looks like the player uh, two years ago rather yeah. than last year. And I, I've, I've been kind of thinking about the way that City are building this as an operation and the, the, the stages that they've gone through. They went the, through the initial, they're almost building a history, if you like. I know it's a very short-term history, but over that time, they've been through the Rubinios and the other guys who were coming in to mm. uh, entertain. And they've slowly sort of honed down what they want. And it, it's almost an American or NBA style of, of building now. They've got these young guys who are impressive on quite big contracts and they're saying, look, we want to build with you guys. You're like LeBron, Sterling's like yeah, a LeBron yeah. James or a Dwayne well, Wade to them. If you're comparing Sterling to Rubinho, what's yeah. interesting about Sterling, obviously, is he tries to make that step up. His de it's his decision making. Yeah. And he's doing a lot of the unfussy stuff, the unshowy mm. stuff, isn't it? Like that little ball yesterday he played for Kolarov. Mm. It's not about ego. Mm. You know, and obviously Sterling's got a lot of stick, but there's he's such a such a brilliant signing for them. And it was good for, for the neutral point of view that Pellegrini was was kept on at Manchester City because yeah. there's so much, especially with big wonderful guys, hair. Excellent yeah. hair, a lovely calm, want to talk. calming influence uh, when you're watching him on the television. Um, but yeah. you know, because I'm all often coming into your living often room. furious in my, in my yeah. living room. Um, if you watch a match today, you will be. <laughs> all right. No, but it, 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 we see not just the big sides, but any sides just immediately chucking away a manager not, not good enough. And Manchester City kept him on amid pressure to perhaps drop him and try and find somebody else. I feel like that Man City know what the timeline is here though, and I think they know he's leaving. Having signed that new two-year deal, we know that that's probably not to stay for another two years. That's probably to get the payout when he leaves. Wait for Pep, isn't it? Yeah, really? basically. I mean, they, they, think, yeah. Well, that's, that's there. We, yeah. Pep or Pardew? Uh, vote in the comments below. <laughs> vote now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Kane needs some help up there for Tottenham Hotspur. They drew one all the way to Leicester City, which I suppose isn't a bad point considering how well yeah. Ranieri's side have yeah. started, but really Spurs need to kickstart their season somewhere, and Kane looks pretty isolated up front. Sam, you are a Spurs fan. What? You're, you look disappointed already. The head's gone. Oh, and, sorry. Uh, and uh, what, 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 Sam? Well, it's just the, it's the same story mm. every season, isn't it? As a Spurs fan, I think we can cope with the concept that we're not going to win the title, but why do we leave it until transfer deadline day every season to actually sign the players that we need? Is it because of the size of our chairman's penis? I'll leave that for you guys to decide. In the comments below. But we're not saying it is. You yeah. know, yeah. clearly Spurs need a striker. Clearly they need a defensive midfielder. We've got the youngest side in the Premier League. So much good. Deli Ali genuinely looks like a young Steven Gerrard. Watch hit the goals he scored for MK Dons last season. The guy is phenomenal. He should be starting. He not made Modric two weeks ago. Mm. Um, it's a lot to be, to be said, but you know the problem is for Spurs. We're not going to finish in the top four again this season because we've lost points. Now our best players are then going to leave and rebuild again. Well, you know? Lawrence, what have Spurs got to do? Then I mean, Sam's highlighted a few, a few key areas. Do, do you think it is simply that they are? The, the sort of fifth or sixth best side at signing players and paying wages and so on and so forth. They are right now. Um, it, 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 Pochettino is a move in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is what I'm saying, is a move in the right direction. He's not the move, no. but he is a move in the right it's direction. Just, he's just another bloke though, at the mercy of the transfer dealings yes. at this moment, isn't he? Yeah, but then that's why maybe why they brought him in, because actually he's able to cope with those sort of, he's, he's, a, he's a great coach in that sense. Yeah, he's got hot coals, an incredible yeah. asset in yeah. terms of. <laughs> but do you think it is really a case of the signings and, and everything that comes with that, the wages and all, but, because Spurs have a good side, they've got a good squad. But and they're Pochettino's so young are, though. True. You know, they're so, they, they don't have that experience. You, you look at Man, you look at Man City 
and you know the players that Man City have got. Mm-hmm. You're talking hardened, battle hardened. Look at Chelsea, battle hardened bastards. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'm look, really interested to see how Spurs go versus Liverpool. Liverpool did their business early. They've got proven Premier League players like Milner, experienced. Benteke should be in his prime. Mm-hmm. How Spurs and Liverpool go? You know, if Spurs are ahead of Liverpool at come the end of the season, then I can just get back in my box and Daniel Levy's done the right thing. Yeah. Mm. Would you see Spurs finishing higher than say, say Liverpool? Or would you see Spurs getting into the top four? Or as Sam says, will it be same old? It's hard to see Spurs breaking the top four, isn't it? Because there's too many sides who are back there. But the two five, Manchester five sides, sides, Chelsea and Arsenal. But yeah, every it. season we are four points below it. Yeah. Four points that we could get if we beat Leicester by just signing a striker at the right moment. You only get three points a game. Well, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 my point there, my point there would be this: st- it still seems like chronic underachievement, doesn't it? And that, it does. that's made, that, but that's part of the problem. But is, we are bedfellows in this, aren't we? Well, that's what so we, <laughs> just pass the buck on to me. You're a Liverpool. You and I were saying that that actually, yeah. you know, it's not about one or the other doing well. It's that they're both not doing the right yeah. thing, and they're both not doing well. And and it, you know, the, the problem is that so many people just want to set it up as well: are they doing well or are they doing well? Both sides have got huge deficiencies in the way that they approach things, and a huge of that amount of that comes from the mental side of things as well. Because Liverpool have a lot of young players. Sterling has made this Man City side into a more energetic team, mm. but he's the younger, the youngest player on the pitch. And funded your. I mean, actually, what's quite interesting about this is that what Daniel Levy's sort of done is he's gone back in time about seven or eight years ago and he mm. signed all these guys like Bale, Defoe, etc., etc. And he said, right, we can't get to the top four by spending big, so we're going to go back to generate the next Defoe, Bale, and was Defoe. Was that Camoli they did that? Oh, Camoli yeah. and Arneson before that. Well, so we're going to have to leave it there, Joe. But uh, for your sake, yeah, if only, was... Sam, I sincerely hope Spurs start to win uh, a lot you. of games. That means a lot. La Liga is up and running, and uh, Rafa Benitez's Madrid look a little less than convincing. Mm-hmm. Going on the first game, gentlemen, Benitez has had much scrutiny in the last few years of his career, well, even at Liverpool, you, you, you would say. Um, he's at Real Madrid. Napoli didn't perform too well last season. Are the knives going to be out very early for, for Benitez? We know what Real Madrid are like, a ridiculous club who demand perfection straight from the off, and a nil-nil draw away to, to Sporting Icon, I believe it was, is not the ideal start set. Well, I just, I just struggle to see how Benitez's sort of fabled joylessness oh, is going to fit with... I'm just poking the bear here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is bear being this man. Yeah. I don't think Benitez is a bear. Is, yeah. going, to, um, is going to fit with, with Real Madrid. I mean, they got rid of Jose because they wanted to do it with, with Blair. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I don't know. I just can't see And it. Ancelotti, they, they yeah, parted I'm, ways with him. Look, I'm, not, I'm, not anti, um, I'm not anti-Rafa. I mean, clearly Rafa does things very well when he gets his, his teeth into the into the players, but I just can't see it giving Madrid a victory in the way they want it. Does Rafa need to get his teeth into the players? Um, I, literally, no. Okay. Uh, I, I, I do think that he's going to need a bit of time to be able to build the squad that he wants, but then you wonder, is the squad that Rafa wants the squad that Real Madrid wants? But he's had yeah. the majority of the summer, is he not, to build this side? He has, yeah. Um, I, I think the whole Benzema thing rumbling on probably isn't going to be helping right now. He didn't play in the game, um, and they looked as if they they were... The, the movement from Bale and his more central role made him so much more part of the game, mm. whereas normally with he looks more on the fringes for Real Madrid. I think it looked good that he was just behind the striker, and I think that probably allows them to complement both Ronaldo and him. Um, but then you think that leaves Rodriguez on the bench and shouldn't you be starting Rodriguez? They, they put Hesse up front, or Jesse, I don't know what you want to call it. Hesse if Spanish. Yeah, um, up front and you think you're going to need another striking option there. Mm. Um, but then there really should be goals coming but from th- the rest of this. But this is just yeah. classic Real Madrid, isn't it? It's the same again every year. It's first world problems. And how do you deal yeah. with them? How do you find a way through the, the problem that is having this much money, but also this much expectation, where, not, where winning is not all you need to do. You also need to do it in this sort of certain mythical style. I mean, they're sort of like the rich man's West Ham, aren't they? It, it, I, I've really never heard that, uh, said that about Real Madrid, but I'm, I'm glad I was here for it when it was said. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they really do need that certain style, that Galactico style. Because yeah. it, Benitez's teams are also notoriously not hard-working, but they have a couple of players in there who mm. are hard-working. And they didn't like Higuain because he was a hard worker. Mm. Um, and they, they're more the swan. They want the hard work to not be seen, and they just glide along. Whereas Benitez makes things look quite hard work. Going back to Liverpool, yeah. I'm trying to remember that those days. He did have the odd 
you know, he liked a bit of flair, didn't he? Luis Garcia. They had the odd flair player, but and at the same time, I think the season where Liverpool challenged most, they were playing some great football because they had they they sat on a bedrock that was a fantastic back six, mm. which was Mascherano, Alonso, like the Hupia, the Carragher, the Finnans, and then a left back that was Reese. And that's a very solid back six. And it's ar it's arguable that. Mm. Don't have Do you think cruising? Sorry. Well, I was, I was just merely going to say, Lawrence, that you, you know you watched uh, you know Rafa Benitez managing Liverpool very very closely, and I watched him with most... Valencia before. That's right, and, and and so were you surprised he got the Real Madrid job? I wasn't surprised he got the job because he's a Madridista, but what I was surprised is that it's almost that he and they went for it at this time. Mm. Uh, and his wife was so right in saying he just goes around cleaning up Jose's messes. Well, that's not quite right. I mean, Ancelotti took over ultimately. For yeah, and Ancelotti, I think, spent big as well. Spent big and tried to uh, basically. Ancelotti was the perfect guy to come in at that time because Ancelotti steers the ship. Doesn't necessarily change a lot to do mentality-wise. He almost continues what Mourinho is doing mm -hmm. in the same way that he almost did at Chelsea. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. That is the end of the Football Daily Weekly for this week. Lawrence, pleasure as always. Thank you. And Sam Collins, it's been lovely having you here. You. Check out Sam's film. There it is, Death of a Gentleman. The Sam Collins story. The Sa <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing he's still here. Rated yeah. X. That's <laughs> Um, uh, if you like cricket, even if you don't like cricket, if you like gentlemen, even if you don't, um, go and see Death Villains, of a Gentleman. Bastards. Is, is destroying the, um, things. Yes. Uh, just using the thesaurus now, aren't yeah. you? Is, um, <laughs> is, is the trailer on YouTube? It is. Well, you, so if, if someone you, types that in. If you were to type Death of a Gentleman film into YouTube, into, into YouTube, you would mm -hmm. come up onto Google, all yeah. sorts of you know, internet This guy things. did that. It's a proper film. It's actually at cinemas. Can you believe it? That must be so satisfying. It is quite satisfying. It's better than anything yeah. I've ever Four years later. I directed that, is what I'd shout if I was, if I was you. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. You're uh, not, you didn't. That you yeah. weren't involved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there we are, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching and uh, stay very safe. <laughs>